Let's check this thing out. Oh, very spacious. Oh my gosh, can you believe the traffic out here today? Look at the traffic, unbelievable. We got a lot happening in the apple farm. I wonder if it has the John Deere beer, beer cooler. Oh yeah, tuck a bush light in there. Screw that back in, that'll keep your beers cold. In this video, you guys, John Deere Hudson Inc. is going to be bringing out one of their new narrow 120 ml tractors with their new smart spray system in order to demo it here on our farm to show me and a couple other growers here in the area they're going to show us how they can change how they can save us time and money in our spray program on a farm like this let's get into it hey everybody my name is ryan craddaville with hudson inc i'm back here with talon at cherry key farms and today we have a 5120 ml that we are demoing along with a smart apply sprayer. The 5120 ml, this is one of the newer tractors the 5 ml series offers with John Deere. Um, it does come in a narrow axle. So this one is set up as a 120 horse, 63 inches uh, total width with the tires. So this can come in different uh, tire options, but around 63 inches is what we get down to with this one up to about 78 inches wide if you want to go a little wider. This also does come in a 105 horse as well as a 130 horse. Uh, so this expands our high value crop or our orchard line of, of tractors uh, along with the new 5EN tractors that were just released earlier this week. So this is our Nelson Hardy sprayer along with our Smart Apply system outfitted on it. This is a Nelson Hardy 3400P air blast sprayer. So on this system, we do have the Smart Apply. You see the box up front here. We have our LiDAR and our Starfire receiver. So this system is a system that we can put on any sprayer, virtually any air blast sprayer. Uh, we can put on truck sprayers even, or if you want to do just normal pull type air blast or engine driven air blast, we can do that. But what the system does is it has this LiDAR up front here that we mount in different locations based on your configuration. And that will see a 270 degree uh, LiDAR space where it will pick up uh, objects, mainly trees or vines that we are spraying. And we'll tell then the nozzles in the back to spray those objects depending on how thick or how dense they are will determine how much that that nozzle will pulse or spray on that tree. We do offer individual nozzle control on the back so we use T-Jet solenoids to actuate each nozzle so depending on the number of nozzles you have depends on how much solenoids you do have on the back but either way they are individual nozzles. So we see a lot of savings with this unit um, we also see consistent droplet size um, the smart apply system does get up to 73 percent uh, savings in chemical and water use, up to 93% savings in chemical runoff, and up to 87% savings in airborne drift. So we do see a lot of good features with this system, a lot of environmental impact uh, type situations that we have, but also we continue to get good coverage as we've shown here in our demo, as well as getting those savings in, the, in these trees. So on the back here, we do have our main spray boom and nozzles. So all those uh, black solenoids you see on there are what we use for the individual nozzle control. So you'll see that we do tee in to the factory boom in this case. So we did extend the boom out about three or four inches to fit those nozzles in there. And then what we do is we put water to the boom. It's continually charged as it would be. And then when there is a tree that we see or the LiDAR is picking up something it needs to spray, it will actuate that solenoid and allow that water to come out and be able to water and chemical to come out and be able to be applied to that tree. Um, so in this case, um, you know, there, there is an electronic piece that is actuating to basically put that spray out there. So there, there, there can be issues with that. So what we do with this system is there is a bypass as well to uh, operate all the solenoids on. And then from there, we can then operate it as an air blast sprayer if there was an issue with the solenoids, but also if we had an issue with the solenoids themselves where they were not actuating and you did not have any spares but just still needed a spray, we can take off those solenoids. We can put in a brass bypass to that so it's no longer relying on the electronic uh, solenoid to actuate the spray. And then we can go ahead and still get you up and spraying just as a normal air blast. You'll have no technology, obviously, to control that individual nozzles, but you still will be able to spray and not be down for the time to get that repaired. So this is our Smart Apply tablet. This is what we use to control all of the actuation, the nozzles back there, as well as set up different configurations for different crops. 
So you'll see on the screen here, we have two different color lines and we also have some dots on there. The green line is where Smart Apply is active and it's on getting those savings for us in the orchard. The blue line is where it's off, so it's not um, actuating any nozzles. It'd be just if you were driving to go tender or whatever situation you have. You'll see on the side here, we have all our nozzles. So this is a nine nozzle per side sprayer. So with this, we can turn on all nozzles with this power button, just spray as normal. So you see all of them turn green, or we can turn on individual booms. So I can turn on just the right side boom and keep the left side off. But we can also, if you have situations where you have young trees or you want to not have a nozzle on, we can actually press and hold this and it'll gray out that nozzle so that nozzle does not come on. So when you're going through the orchard with Smart Apply, it will change from red to green as they as they cycle on and off. And then at, down here we have our acre or our, sorry, our gallon counter as well as our speed. So we'll count gallons theoretically as well. You input those in the spray configuration. So we have multiple spray configurations in here that will allow us to basically set a width of the row, also how many nozzles, how far we want the LiDAR to see, all kinds of information that we can get in there um, to control the system the best we can for each crop. We also have jobs. There's no currently no jobs in here, but jobs is a place where you can set up and you can pre-plan your applications to be able to document all that. Um, one great thing with jobs is if you're going through the field and you are uh, or going through the orchard and you are spraying at night or spraying in the time where you, you forgot where the row was that you left off with when you go to tender, the system will keep track of that. So as you go back into that row, it will show that green line there where you've already sprayed and the sprayer will know you've already been through that row. So it will not show or it will not let the sprayer spray. So anywhere where it sees that green line, it will not let the sprayer spray. Same if this had a boundary on it, we can make boundaries for orchards it will stop the sprayer from spraying when we're outside of that boundary to prevent spraying into another crop or another block that we do not want to spray. Let's check this thing out. Oh, very spacious. Shifter is new in design compared to our 20 year old machines. A much comfier tractor than the previous models. That is absolutely for sure. Dash. We got the radio over here. Nice air. I wonder if it has the John Deere beer beer cooler. Oh yeah. Tuck a bush light in there. Screw that back in. That'll keep your beers cold. Three levers. You got the lift. Your throttle. I don't know how much more you could ask for. Obviously the screen that we learned about. It's got rabbit. Turtle digital dash with your diesel your def no hump in the middle I'll tell you that but no hump here down by the feet that is huge our other narrow tractors have the hump it's just not as comfortable but this open floor concept much nicer it does seem a touch wide for probably how wide when we have all of these trees here in front of us are going to be much longer branches and he said that there's a newer tractor a 5105 I believe EN which is going to be a narrower setup and it probably would be a little more appropriate oh my gosh can you believe the traffic out here today look at the traffic unbelievable we got a lot happening in the apple farm one thing I wanted to check is how tight that this tractor and sprayer could turn because in the past we have sprayed with our four-wheel drive John Deere out here and it does not turn sharp enough compared to the two-wheel drive with our 12-foot rows here so one thing I wanted to try with this tractor was the ability to kind of make that turn and see how easily it does make that turn from the first row I turned in it kind of did seem like it could make it much easier because before you had to swing way out to the side in, to, in order to catch that that alternate row coming up but just by the first couple passes I've done with it, you can see the tires here. It's absolutely gonna make this turn easily. And you don't even really run into even coming close to jackknifing the sprayer uh, behind us with the rear tires and the tongue and the PTO of the, of the sprayer. So I don't know if you mentioned it before, but they talked about how they were going to try and transition from this display into one of the more traditional John Deere displays that you see in most of the guidance systems and the tractors kind of integrating it all into deer 
which is I think more preferred in, instead of having most of the other uh, companies, just multiple different pieces of technology mixed into one. All right, everybody, if you liked this video, don't forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel for to help support, and in addition, YouTube wants you guys to watch this video next. So click on that. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.